Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. A new holiday tradition is coming to Lincoln. The Lincoln Children's Zoo is partnering with the Lincoln Electric System to present zoo lights powered by LES, one of the largest light displays in the Midwest. Joining me is the zoo president and CEO John Chapo, another first for the zoo. It it's, is. We're, it's been a big year. <laughs> it's been an exceptional year for the, for the Lincoln Children's Zoo. Thanks to our awesome community, 2019 is indeed historic for the zoo regarding the largest expansion ever at the zoo, largest fundraising ever for the zoo, all kinds of great things happening. And now this awesome event that's never happened before, We're, Zoo Lights Powered by That's audience. right. And before we go any further, we have to see how the giraffes are doing. The giraffes are doing wonderfully. They're, they're settled into their new home. They've been in Lincoln now a little bit over a year. They're starting to get a little bit older. They just love their new home. They've been munching on lettuce with all the kids feeding them for all summer long. And the wonderful thing about the giraffes is, you know, the giraffes will be open all year. All year. The zoo's open now. That's part of our history also. The zoo's going to be a year-round zoo. All right. Well, you're going to cap off a historic zoo, uh, zoo year with the zoo lights. Exactly. How did the idea for zoo lights come up? You know, I, I, we used to do lights a long time ago at the Lincoln Children's Zoo, but we kind of pulled the plug on it when a lot of other things were happening, shall we say, you know, with you could jump on a Star Tram bus and see see all kinds of great decorations. Downtown was lit up. Mahoney Park was lit up. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anymore. And the smart people at LES said, hey, let's partner with the Lincoln Children's Zoo and do it. just an awesome event for our community. And let's launch a brand new tradition in Lincoln of great zoo lights. So thanks to LES and Lincoln Children's Zoo, we're going to do it. All right. A quarter of a million yeah. LED lights. LED so lights. you're not going to have a big electric bill after all this is over either. Well, we're, we're demonstrating to the public how you can have awesome lights using LED and being very smart and very and very celebratory as well. We're the first zoo in the nation to have all of our lights to be LED lights. Could, and we're really excited about it. You can imagine a quarter of a million lights too. It's just going to be That's wow. amazing. Well, what can the public expect <laughs> when they go to Zoo Lights? The public can, can expect one of the most exceptional light shows that they've ever, ever seen. Imagine walking walking through a 60 foot long lit tunnel that is the lights are moving as you're walking through and there's a whole sequence of great things or imagine stepping into a crystal ball that's 10 feet across and doing a selfie with there's just thousands and thousands of lights around you imagine a 40 foot christmas tree dancing to music so it's just going to be, we are lighting up the zoo, we're going to have giant wreaths, we're going to have animal, lit up animals all over the zoo. There's Real no ones and cut out <laughs> ones. <laughs> we're not putting any lights around the tiger's neck, no, but we will have light up tigers. That'd we be tricky. We will have light up giraffes, light up red pandas, all kinds of your favorite animals, a light up alligator in the pond that the kids get to go into. So we're going to have phenomenal lights, phenomenal, it's just going to be such an immersive experience. We're going to use the, the expansion zoo. Okay, plus a big chunk of the original zoo as well. It's going to be kind of a different forested effect in the original zoo because we got all these great big trees there. Wow. The planning has been going on for a year. Let's yeah. talk about some of the numbers. I understand there's miles of extension cords. There, there are miles and miles <laughs> of extension cords. You're exactly right. So we're, we got extension cords. We got, I mean, the cases, the semi trucks of decorations we have. We have six foot Christmas ornaments, okay, that you can have your picture. I mean, imagine, the ornaments are, they're just ginormous. It's, it's really, and it's gonna be right next to a 30 foot Christmas tree, right in the middle of the zoo plaza. So we got 34 foot tree here, 40 foot tree there. We have 60 feet of light tunnel. We have a mile of, of, of lit up cords in all different colors and dozens of animals throughout the entire zoo. It's just, we've been putting up lights since uh, Labor Day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a I, team of four every day is out there hanging lights. I understand. I think it was the newspaper said 3,000 hours of setup. Yes, exactly. Is it your crew and LES as well that are doing this setup? LES is helping us out, especially when it comes to reaching those really tall things. They got those great bucket trucks for reaching up. Like, you know, when you're trying to light up a 40-foot cypress tree, uh, that's beyond ladder, okay? <laughs> and we don't have many ladders at the zoo that tall, okay? So they're helping us out. We got uh, four great folks on the zoo team that are just led by our horticultural staff. They're out there figuring it all out and lighting it all up. And we, we got great, it, it, it's all special design for a long outside exposure and things like that. So we got extra good safety connections and things. So we're not, we don't just use any little simple extension cord. Right, okay? they're so making sure everything is, is safely hooked everything up. Everything is safely hooked up and it's just, and it's just going to be phenomenal. We're also going to have a hot chocolate. 
Okay, so you, of you gotta walk around the zoo enjoying hot chocolate, and you get to ride the train. Oh, is it gonna be all lit up it's too? It's gonna be all lit up. The train tunnel is gonna be all lit up. And so it's just gonna, and you get to circle the lit up zoo and go through all the lights riding the train, listening to the holiday music. We're gonna have holiday music playing. And it's just gonna be a, just a fun, immersive, great family experience. Now I notice in your fabulous logo here, the <laughs> Zoo Lights logo, it does feature a giraffe jumping over the moon and it's got a red nose. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's, it's our Rudolph giraffe. Your Rudolph exactly. giraffe. Are you going to try to put a red nose on one of the giraffes? Uh, the giraffes are very, are very tolerant to Lincoln Children's Zoo and they love lettuce. I don't know if we can get them trained to put <laughs> a, a red spot on their nose, but uh, it's, just, it's just really great, you know, because it is, it is kind of cute. It's very unique. This is just going to be a, a phenomenal experience. And we want families to start a tradition. And, you know, Kevin Wales and I, Kevin, you know, being the CEO at LES, we said we sat down we did a lot of talking we really hope that this helps build Lincoln and that it encourages other institutions places organizations to want to add to the holiday experience here to increase Lincoln as a holiday destination so we get more folks coming to town to do Christmas shopping and and staying in hotels and restaurants and buying gasoline and things like that because we know this will have a regional draw we know people will be coming from miles away to come to zoo lights powered by LES and so we want this let's, let's get more people here for a longer time all right exactly. now we're we happen to be taping this on Halloween you can't right. tell neither of well you're in your zookeeper, <laughs> I'm in outfit. zookeeper outfit exactly. but um, for Halloween of course for many years you've dressed up as as the wizard exactly. for boo at the zoo yep. are you gonna dress up for zoo lights <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> my beard is big and it's white okay but thank goodness I don't have quite have, have the girth of Santa Claus but no the zoo lights is all about great decorations you know just walking around and listening to the music mm -hmm. and seeing the lights and riding the train it's about those kinds of great family experiences and we're actually selling tickets go on sale November 5th where you're going to buy a time ticket and a day ticket because we want your experience at the zoo to be wonderful we don't want you shoulder to shoulder with you know 5,000 other people we want you to be able to stroll and enjoy and see and not have your kids pushed over by you know a whole bunch of other people so that's why you'll buy a ticket per your day and time if you want a VIP ticket we get to get in first those people will be able to come in at 530 otherwise it's gonna be time tickets starting between six and you know and ending at nine o'clock every night all right so. zoo lights powered by LES will open up November 29th. That's a Friday. We may loan you our great big light switch. You can flip the switch and turn everything on at once. Indeed. Uh, Wednesdays through Sundays from November 29th through December 30th. They will not have this event on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and you'll notice it stops December 30th so not New Year's right. Eve or New Year's Day right. as well but that gives people over 20 opportunities to see this fabulous light show. Uh, 5.30 for the VIP, 6 o'clock for general, and lincolnzoo.org is where you go to get your tickets. That's right. Are exactly. they on sale right now? They'll be on, they go on sale November 5th. November 5th. Yeah. All right. And ticket prices, there's a range. There, there, um, there is you, a price. Yes, there yes, are. If yes. You, if you get your ticket online and you're a zoo member, they're only $10.95. That's right. The highest price ticket is still only $24.95, and that's right. for non-zoo members VIP. for the VIP. Exactly. So, so like eleven dollars to twenty five dollars. It's, it's a good it's bargain, you, 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 and and everybody coming in gets a special pair of glasses. Whoa! That's going to when you put on those glasses, those lights are really going to look even more spectacular. So just stay tuned. That's just a, it's going to be great. It's going to be immersive. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great family tradition. All Zoo right. lights powered by LES. Now we were visiting just before the show. We've both been here a little over thirty years. That's right. It's you a, came here as zoo director. Did yeah. you ever imagine that 30 years later no. you'd be at this point? No, you know, I came to Lincoln for a couple, three years because who wants to live in Lincoln, Nebraska? Okay, I'm a Hoosier, okay? Don't hold that against me. I'm a Wildcat. Don't okay. hold that against me. Exactly. But, you know, Lincoln is such an exceptional community it's, and it's because of the exceptional people. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Lincoln Children's Zoo has had its success these years because of the exceptional people, the leaders, you know, the kids, kids, you know, who are raising money because they're selling lemonade and giving it to the zoo, corporate, you know, leaders, 
foundations. The community loves their children's zoo. It's a great community. Tracy and I fell in love, got three wonderful millennial sons because this Lincoln is home for us. And so, because we love Lincoln so much, we're gonna make Lincoln a better destination. And that's why Zoo Lights at the Lincoln Children's Zoo, Zoo Lights powered by LES is just gonna be a perfect addition to the community. All right, starting November 5th. That's right. You can get your tickets. Zoo Lights powered by LES. Wednesdays through Sundays, November 29th through December 30th. The event will not be held on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, um, but the rest of the time, get your tickets it's now happening. at lincolnzoo.org. Thank John, you. thank you so much, and thank you for all you've done to make the zoo a real destination and now a holiday destination exactly. too. Exactly, thanks a lot. Really, it's an honor to be a part of it, and you know what, I'll see you at Zoo Lights, powered by LES. I will be there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have some information on a couple of winter runs and the schedule of events at the Lancaster Event Center during the break, and then we'll be back with Out and About. Welcome back to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez and I'm joined again by Jeff Mall from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we want to start with a couple of recent news events. Um, former Mayor Beitler was recognized with a big travel award. Yeah, big deal, big honor for Chris Beitler, former Mayor Chris Beitler, as well as our organization that had the opportunity to nominate him for all of his years of service. He received the Frank Morrison Award for his years of service from the Nebraska Travel Association. This award was given out at our Nebraska Travel Conference uh, annual event last week in North Platte, Nebraska. Uh, the pictures you show Chris is surrounded by tourism professionals from across the state. John Ricks, our tourism uh, director, was super excited to have Chris as part of this because when John came to town, Chris was still mayor and Chris mm -hmm. had a chance to talk about all the amazing things tourism-wise, not just in Lincoln, but across the state of Nebraska that Chris Beitler has touched and helped craft. And, and I couldn't be happier for him more appreciative of his efforts and uh, an easy award to nominate him for. All right. Nebraska, it's not for everyone, but <clears throat> Architectural Digest likes it. It's a big deal. That's right. The Architectur Architectural Digest, which is a magazine that's 100 years old, yep. had a really nice feature on how design lovers should spend 48 hours in Lincoln, Nebraska. The perfect travel itinerary. They talked about some of the, the neat places that we have in Lincoln from staying at the Kindler Hotel and the Graduate Hotel to spending some time at Sheldon, the Sunken Gardens. Uh, the Hub Cafe, Single Barrel is two great restaurant destinations, but wrapping up the night at the other room, which is mm -hmm. a unique yes. destination for yes. uh, a speakeasy. And one of their, their big uh, favorites was, of course, our beautiful Capitol, which yes. is an architectural wonder. Yeah. So. The photos on their website, I encourage people to go over to Architectural Digest, take a look at the article online, because the photos that they were able to pull out of this article were incredible. All right. We just had John Chapel on. Mm -hmm. Zoo Lights is going to put Lincoln on the map in a different way. He's yeah. going to light up the zoo with all those LED lights. But we've got a lot of holiday events. Um, the People City Mission has their Starry Nights Christmas Tree Festival and Gala. Yeah, this is the ninth annual event where you get a chance to go out and witness a lot of really cool, uniquely decorated trees that have been brought together by different organizations and businesses and sponsored. Uh, the night will include not only the auction and the opportunity to, you know, to get these trees, but also have some great children's workshop, craft, craft activities, and of course pictures with jolly old St. Nick. That's right. This is the People City Mission's largest community event and fundraiser. So great destination for it too at Speedway Village. Lots of room out there. All right. Now for 47 years, the Heritage League has been doing its Holiday of Trees. Um, this year it's November 5th and 6th, and the proceeds this year are going to benefit the Lincoln Music Teachers Association. Association so they're going to have some uh, adult and 
youth musicians out there for the Holiday of Trees to entertain folks. Mrs. Santa will be there as well as Santa Claus from 5 to 7 o'clock and just a great opportunity to interact with the community and, and uh, take a look at the Christmas season ahead. All right, let's do some shopping. We're going to go to the Holiday Spectacular Arts and Crafts Fair. I think this is a new event they're going to have about mm -hmm. 100 craft booths at the Lincoln Sports Foundation, and this is for what everybody used right. to call Abbott. Yeah, out on North 70th Street, I would applaud Dan Leswing and everybody associated with the Lincoln Sports Foundation facility for everything they've done to get that facility back up. This is one of two craft fairs that will take place at the Lincoln Sports Foundation uh, coming up this winter. All right. The sixth annual art market is coming up at the Quilt Center. This is an event that is sponsored by the Friends of the International Quilt Museum. Support local business, shop from local artists, and support the museum during the Friends of the International Quilt Study Center 6th Annual Art Market coming up in the month of November. Now our outdoor farmer mar farmers markets are done for the season, but we do have a holiday harvest farmers market coming up uh, two Sundays in December, December 1st and 15th. 2608 Park Boulevard, local food as well as late season produce. Shop the market for all of your gift giving needs, but more importantly, get a chance to put together some of your holiday dishes with locally grown and produced goods. All right, the Santa celebration begins at South Point Pavilions. Mm. This is coming up Saturday, November 30th. They light the big tree out there. Santa Station will be unveiled, the mistletoe mailbox, a great chance to put in your letter to Santa and be a part of the Christmas celebration, music activities, performers, refreshments, and giveaways throughout the center. And again, that Santa Station and mistletoe mailbox are open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays um, from November 29th through mid-December, and it's between Von Maur and Talbot, yep. so you can't miss it. Can't miss it on the west side. All right, winter also means ice, and that means hockey. And did you ever notice how our stars have such a nice name compared to everyone else? The Force. Storm. The Stampede. Lancers. Arr. And then there's the stars. Right, and, and I love the Lincoln Stars. Um, season ticket holder way back in the day and, and started to go back to games as time frees up. The Lincoln Stars are off to a very, very impressive start. They are probably one of the top organizations right now as far as record and, and, and what they're putting on the ice in the USHL. Get out there and support the Lincoln Stars this winter. All right. It's time to support the American Cancer Society at the annual November. <laughs> That's hard to say, Novembeard Brews and Beards Festival. Yes. And if you think Jeff's beard is pretty special. Nothing. That's going to be nothing compared nothing. to these, what do we say, fabulous facial <laughs> hair on display at this uh, out at the Firefighters Hall. This festival is the ch last chance you have to vote for Lincoln's favorite beard. All money raised will go to the American Cancer Society. So this November beard thing, it's been, it's kind of been a thing for the last few years? It has. It's actually a big thing. I, I think it's No Shave November is what a lot of men will honor out there to, you know, I guess pay tribute and thoughts to various things and organizations. It's just a great reason to grow facial hair. And I'm trying to think, <laughs> do I go longer? I what do I do? I think it's a good reason for you to not shave. Okay, there we go. I like it. <laughs> All right. Science Cafe is back at the Happy Raven. And this month's topic, if trees could talk. And have an expert from UNL talking Dr. about all things trees. Yeah, Dr. Eric North will be there. He's the Associate Professor of Practice at the School of Natural Resources at the University of Nebraska. And then we have the All Things Green fir Free First Thursday Noon Brown Bag Series. So by the time they say all that, the luncheon's over. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. This, um, is this, spot, this has a big long list of sponsors too. It does. A lot of great people, universities, statewide arboretum, the UNL Institute of Agriculture, the Natural Resources, as well as Lincoln Parks and Rec, the Lincoln Downtown Association, all getting behind a presentation called Winter Plants. All right. And that's at our beautiful Jane Snyder Trail Center. So you might want to check that out. Arts for the Soul is presenting Sing from the Heart. And this is going to be a really family oriented event for this annual concert. There's a name here, a storyteller, as she's been around Pippa before. White. Pippa White's been doing this. Great dessert concert and charity fundraiser in a family-oriented event complete with ice cream. Ice cream. Child's-themed music, captivating storytelling, and a shortened kid-friendly program. Again, all ages, especially for the kiddos at First Presbyterian Church. And there will be a free offering for Hope Spoke. That is formerly the Child Guidance Center. We're going to have a bunch of jazz mm -hmm. happening uh, soon, starting with First Lutheran's First Jazz First Friday Jazz, and this is a lunchtime event. You can buy lunch there, you can bring your own lunch and listen to some professional jazz musicians. Let's not be scared off by the fact that this draws 250 to 300 people every year. This is obviously a great senior outing for those that are retired and have a chance to go enjoy lunch and music. 
First Lutheran Church. Suggest a donation of $6 that will go back and make sure that nobody goes away hungry from the event. All right. Nebraska Jazz Orchestra is kicking off its season with trumpet legend Bobby Shue. Now, he has played with some other legends. Boy, you I might tell you. recognize the names Tommy Dorsey, Benny Goodman, Woody Herman, Buddy Rich, Maynard Ferguson. He's got a couple of Lifetime Achievement Awards, some Grammy nominations, and he's taught for 64 years, so he's a legend in many areas. One thing you forgot is he's received Lifetime Achievement Awards both in the U.S. and internationally. Place to be, Lincoln Cornusker Marriott Hotel, to hear this great jazz legend. And to wrap up our jazz trio today, the Capital <laughs> Jazz, of course, every Monday at Shea Soto. Um, this is kind of a regional event. They have a lot of Omaha musicians mm -hmm. come down for mm -hmm. this. I want to point out November 25th, the Kearney Jazz Society will be here. So another out-of-town visitor coming uh, to play some jazz with, uh, with our own local musicians. Now through December 9th, should be a lot of fun over at Shea Soto at 11th and K. And then every Thursday, you can go back to Shea Soto for this new concert series, Live! Exclamation in Lincoln. The Lightning Bugs on November 7th, November 14th in Nebraska Brass. Again, this will take you through December 11th with the McGovern String Band. Lots of great things going on at Shea Soto in two different events, both Mondays and Thursdays. This is put on by Arts Incorporated. We want to give a shout out to Dean Heist and his mm -hmm. menagerie of animals over there. He was featured on the cover of Elle magazine this yes. week. He does a great job. He's a great local musician and mm -hmm. also a really organized guy. That's good. Yeah, he, uh, he was on our Arts Council board for a while. And impressive. Yeah, he is an impressive guy. All right, Tada is having a Christmas Palooza Cabaret. Bob Rook is promising some surprises. Nuh -uh. Does that surprise you? Nuh -uh. No? No, say it isn't so. December 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th at Tada Theater. Comedy, variety acts, music, and a few for surprises too. Christmas Palooza dude at Cabaret <laughs> at the Tada Theater. Lincoln Community Playhouse usually does a holiday type show. This year, it's going to be big. It's Frozen Junior. Oh, Elsa. And Anna. Princess Anna. I mean, the princesses Olaf of Anna. And All of them. Kristoff and magic and adventure and humor. And this features new songs in addition to the song we shall not mention. <laughs> it's already in my head. No. You just just go. Let, just let it go. Should I just let it go? Let it okay. Go. All right. All right. You know the song. You know the characters. We do. <laughs> Frozen Junior at the Playhouse. Pretty much the whole month of December. You might want to get your tickets early. I have a feeling this is going to be a big favorite. Great opportunity. Angels Theater Company Salon Reading Series continues again. This is the first Sundays of the month at two o'clock at Turbine Flats. Mm -hmm. That is on twenty one twenty four Y Street. Pig Cat is the play for December. This is stage readings, and then there's a talk back after that. And there's another special event the Angels have coming up uh, November 24th. The Angels has a playwriting collective, and that collective and one of the playwrights, Jillian mm -hmm. Carter, are presenting a night of original monologues written by some of the members of the collective. So you get to hear the monologue, and then the playwrights want some feedback from the audience, what worked, what didn't. Yeah. So, in yeah, that'll Happy, be fun. The Happy Raven's a great, great outlet. It's, it's actually one of the most well-known in the region craft beer destinations mm -hmm. in downtown Lincoln, right here in Lincoln at the Happy Raven. Neat opportunity to kind of marry the two interests into a great event. Solo Tales and Ales, November 24th. Love it. All right, Nebraska Wesleyan has a couple of productions. One is <laughs> one you probably haven't heard of. Now, period, here, period, this, period. The relationships of four funny friends on, are on exhibit at this Natural History Museum, tackling life's big questions and the experimental musical that weaves through time. So this one is an experimental musical. The other production at Nebraska Wesleyan is not experimental. Not at it all. It is a holiday classic, of course, Christmas Carol. Big fan of the Christmas Carol. It's an uplifting holiday classic. Everybody over at Nebraska Wesleyan should be commended for bringing this back to the stage December 5th through the 15th. All right, let's go to the lead center. The Nebraska Repertory Theater season continues. Glass Menagerie is going through uh, November 17th at the Temple Building. A riveting memory play follows the fragile Wingfield family, and this is one of the most beloved plays of the 20th century, Tennessee Williams's The Glass Menagerie. The Rep also is continuing its holiday cabaret. This is coming up December 12th through the 14th at the Temple Building. They set the theater up kind of like a little mm -hmm. dinner club thing with, cool. with snacks and drinks and some great music, some uh, 
some favorite rep performers, some emerging artists, and some surprises. So well, last surprise year, guests. That's right. Last year, Diane? was Callie Dooling, a yeah. Playhouse kid who went on to, to star on Broadway. It's a big so, deal. No, I'm not. You're, you're not no. one of them. <laughs> no, I usually go, but I'm in the audience. Okay. All yeah, right. All right. I'm not. Not you that. You are talented. talented. You're I'm, very talented. No, these are like professional. Next level. Mm. Okay. All right. Omni Arts is presenting a show called. Top Girls, and this is a dark comedy. It takes a look at women who achieve success by adopting the worst traits of self-made men. Wow. Yes, Carol Churchill uh, play, and uh, I have several friends in this. It should be a lot of fun to go see this. This is um, coming up uh, November, I think it's the 13th through okay. the 17th at Omni Arts. Adult content and themes. Is this a girls' night out? Is this a couples' night out kind of event? How are you going to characterize that? It's an everybody go see, except that you'll want to make sure you know it, it contains adult content you're, and themes. Make sure you're of age. It's all right. right. All right. Lead Center is bringing Brian Regan. Is it Regan? Regan. Regan yep. back. Yep. Um, he sold out the lead mm -hmm. in just a couple years ago, and he will be back. The funniest stand up alive and Entertainment Weekly named him your favorite comedian's favorite comedian. Mm -hmm. Great entertainment going on at the Lead Center. Things really got off to a great start this season and will continue through the month of November. All right, Jazz at Lincoln Center um, Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis. They're going to be doing some holiday favorites. Big, soulful, big band sounds. Yeah, Big Holidays is a fun one-of-a-kind extra holiday, extra one-of-a-kind holiday extravaganza, great music. Joy to the world, jingle bells, all of your favorite holiday songs. And we definitely have a holiday theme as we're wrapping up our segment We do. We're closing strong. Today. We've got the Lincoln's Symphony Orchestra with its Deck the Halls concert. And this has some really cool um, guest performers, too, including the city's premier handbell choir. Yeah, not to mention Stephanie Chase with uh, the great local dance troupe that she has. Dazzle and Delight as they bring your favorite holiday music to life. And Lincoln's premier handbell choir, the Suzuki, Lincoln Suzuki Studios, as well as LSO's Young Artist Competition winner. A neat competition for youth and a good opportunity to get on the big yep. stage at the Lead Center. All right, and then the 35th annual production of the Nutcracker wraps up our list. Lincoln Midwest Ballet presents 200 local dancers, live orchestra, professional guest artists, great costumes, and this is a wonderful showcase for, for the great ballet dancers we have not just here in Lincoln, but also the region. I think we've got over 200 dancers as part of this event, and a lot of those are local student dancers that mm -hmm. you might know. You're actually gonna probably start to see my daughter is in the Nutcracker signs, oh, popping up good. in signs across the community, and uh, just a great thing. I, 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 one, can't remember a year that's went this fast, and we're talking about the holidays already. Things have been so busy and so fun. And I think it's because we have such a great community full of great events to do. And uh, we hope that the month of November and December are good for everybody listening. Well, we have plenty of events for whatever you ever you want to do and lots of great ways yes. to get in the holiday mood. We're taping this Halloween, so I <laughs> I really don't want to talk about the holidays yet. I, I know. I to wait a little bit longer, know, but, uh, but they are soon approaching. Yeah, and for anybody out there that's looking for more information on what we talked about today, Lincoln.org is our website. Give us a call at 434-5348 or stop down to our visitor center at 7th and P. All right. Thank you so much, you Jeff. You betcha. When we come back, we will have Tom Lorenz from Pinnacle Bank Arena and Pinewood Bowl. As we go to break, we're going to take a look at what's happening at some of our great museums and galleries. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Out and About. Tom Lorenz joins us now, and we're going to talk a little bit about the big three concerts you had right before basketball season started. Miranda Lambert, Guns N' Roses, Bob Dylan. That was a great lineup, a little bit different for everything, and there were three really great shows. Uh, Miranda comes out and always does a terrific show. Uh, she had Pistol Annie's with her. Uh, it was just, and, and then it was one of those shows that really prove how a great a writer she is, what a great performer she is. It was a lot of fun. Then we went into Guns N' Roses and... Um, almost uh, sold out. It was almost sold out. It was a huge night. I mean, that is the classic rock show. Mm -hmm. uh, big stage, great big video board, lots of sound. And these guys, you know, have not lost a step in all these, these years. Slash stands out there and just is a, uh, the ultimate guitarist. And, you know, the songs are recognizable. Um, uh, Axel's voice is still great after all this time and he hits those high notes right away. It was so much fun. It was just a great show, and it just was like you kind of are assaulted by the sound, you know. And, <laughs> and then, then uh, you said a Dylan best best of his concerts you've seen. I've seen multiple Bob Dylan shows over the years, and this was the best Bob Dylan show I've ever seen. He was active, engaged, great. I mean, with stand at the piano and bang away. Um, it, it talks. It kind of shows. You know, I mean, uh, he played songs from all his different eras. Um, he's, his voice is a little bit gravelly, but still expressive and uh, he had a band with him that was second to none. They were hot and it was a blues kind of a feel to it. So no, it was really fun. It was three really different shows, three different kind of settings and it's fun to be able to have that flexibility. And I think a lot of people, you know, got to see one of those three shows and had a great time. That sounds like it. Well, we're taping this. We should say we're taping on Halloween. Mm -hmm. Tom has on his arena manager costume. That's my today. arena manager costume, yep. And um, it, uh, it's scary. I mean, I scare <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> but I mention that because the, the exhibition game, the Huskers exhibition game with Doan was last night, and yep. you said it looks like it's going to be a really fun year. This is going to be a great season. There is so much talent on the floor for the Huskers, and, you know, Fred, Fred's the kind of guy who will be able to take all of that talent and mold it into a team. There's some real flashes of brilliance there. There's a few flashes of a little rawness, but that's okay. And um, they started out very slow, and then they once they got rolling, um, they ended up with 91 points last night. Uh, Doan's a solid team. It was fun to see them play. And I think last night was interesting because I'm sure there's a lot of people that live in the area that are Doan supporters and Husker supporters. Right. And so they had to pick which hat they were going to wear last <laughs> night. But uh, it was a great start. It was a great exhibition. We look forward to the team. Uh, Amy Williams' team, I can't wait mm -hmm. to see them. They'll be playing uh, later this week. And uh, so I think we're going to be in great shape for basketball this winter. All right. Well, there's a few other things that are going to happen in between the games. First of all, we want to mention Girls State Volleyball. Of course, that's held at several locations, but the finals are at Devaney, right? right? So we do the Thursday and Friday. Uh, we'll play uh, multiple uh, game sets that day. And then we set the way to set the floor up, we have two courts going at the same time. Wow. We have a big curtain that divides it. So lots of energy in there, lots of excitement. Um, it's always great to have them there. We always look at this as our opportunity to showcase Pinnacle Bank Arena, the rail yard, and Lincoln to the whole state again. Because you get so many different teams year to year that come in, they spend some great time here, and then they go over to the Vanny, uh, to that you know volleyball palace there, and play the finals where the Huskers play. So it's really a great weekend, and we're very excited to have them back. All right, season's beatings. You're gonna sandwich that in in December. This is your kind of the annual um, MMA event? Yeah, we do, two, we do two events a year. We do spring brawl and season's beatings. And, uh, um, you know, whether people know it or not, there's a really active um, uh, mixed martial arts uh, scene here in Lincoln and in Omaha. And we've got one of the best guys that put it, puts it together. Um, Train does a terrific job of not only running it, but putting all the matches together. It's, it's really a high quality event. We usually draw two or 3,000 people to the event. It's a fun night and um, you know, I, I hope people, if they've never done it before, tickets aren't that expensive, come on down and check it out and uh, watch. You know, we probably do 12 to 13 fights a night, mm -hmm. so it's a full night of MMA. All right. We want to mention that the Elks Christmas Party, again, is coming back to um, the arena. We don't know the exact date on that, but we should have that uh, coming up. We should have that date soon. Yeah, there's some information coming out about that. We always look forward to it every year. Uh, it's, a really, it's a lot of fun. It'll be on a Sunday, I believe, this year, and so uh, they'll have more information on the times and things coming out. But uh, what a fun time. And I think the uh, uh, skating rink will be in over at the rail yard, and so families can make it kind of a day. All right. 
Tom, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming back. How many years have they been in here in Lincoln? So uh, I, we did them multiple years at, at Pershing, and it wasn't in every year. It was a multiple and uh, coming off and on. But ever since we opened up Pinnacle Bank Arena, they've been back every year. We were worried this year. Uh, early on, we weren't able to fit it into the schedule. And then once we got the Big Ten schedule, a couple dates opened up, and uh, we were able to put this, uh, put this on. It's, uh, it, it's great to have them back, and you know, there's tremendous talent there. They have so much fun. They interact with the crowd so well. It's a perfect family event. All right, and that backdrop on you looks like a number kind 15 of, there. Yeah, he's kind of, I'm kind of look, getting, a, <laughs> getting a basketball in the back of my head here. Uh, take it easy there, <laughs> number 15. Um, <laughs> we need to finish the show. All right, Corn and Breaking Benjamin. This was a fairly recent announcement. They're, it really they're was. They're coming in February. And we haven't had Corn here before. That was one of the bands that uh, we've had a really great no run corn of. No Corn in Nebraska? No, I, I know, no Corn in <laughs> No, it... Uh, uh, we, we've had a lot of great rock over the last couple of years, and, and people have really um, um, come out strong for it. So Corn was one of those bands that I got asked about a lot. Uh, they're out on tour, so we're glad to have them in. Uh, they've been around for multiple years, a lot of great songs, a lot of great musicianship there. And then Breaking Benjamin has been at the building a couple times. Uh, they're not quite a house band yet, but they're so good. And, you know, it's always fun to have them here as part of it. And they draw, you know, a good number of the crowd just to see them. And it's, it's when, when you get a band that is um, so tight and so well put together and, and puts on a great show, to put these two together will be a really good night. All right. Monster Jam is back then in April for... For two days, I'm not sure how many performances that is. So we'll do three. We'll do one on Friday night and two on Saturday. And this gets bigger every year. Um, you know, the, the, these trucks, and I've been doing Monster Jam and or Mud Bogs, you know, since the mid-70s. And uh, the state of that uh, sport right now, to have monster trucks come in, it is amazing what these trucks do and what the drivers do. Um, they have so many different... Uh, um, improvements on the trucks and it's just fun I mean to see them go skyward and we're not talking about five or six feet we're talking about 10 12 15 feet when they're up in the air um, they're they're fast and they spin and do all kinds of I mean it's it's awesome and it is a show and families love it uh, but it's a you know we see a lot of couples and dates and it's just one of those unique things, and I know there's a lot of folks that don't miss it. I can't wait for it to come back in the pinnacle. All right, and Brantley Gilbert then is coming in April. Brantley is one of those uh, really good country artists that uh, you know didn't play the games to be you know the top you know kind of a bro country kind of guy, but solid solid music. Uh, we're really thrilled to have him come out. Uh, he's kind of an independent out there, so uh, we're set up for him to come in in, in April. Uh, that will be one of those shows that people will talk about for a long time. He's got a couple great openers, and uh, we've got some time to buy. So, you know, there's still some mm -hmm. tickets available. It's not till April, but we're really excited that uh, Brantley's coming back to Lincoln. All right. So far, we have one show announced for the Pinewood 2020 season. That's right. Vampire Weekend. It'll probably be one of the last shows out there next, it next season. It will be late September, um, and they are, uh, they're coming out. Vampire Weekend, was uh, the excitement in Lincoln was tremendous for this, and it's, it's a band that uh, maybe doesn't tour quite as often. Uh, great to get them out here in Nebraska. There's a great following, uh, but there's, and tickets are selling. So, I mean, I hope f uh, as people start to look at maybe Christmas presents or those kind of things, uh, don't wait too long because all those great seats will be gone. But uh, we have a couple other shows that we know are confirmed and we haven't announced yet. I've got a list that's very long. This could be an epic season as we start to look at who's out there. Um, you know, this will be our eighth year for putting on shows. Wow. Uh, the Parks and Rec guys continue to, you know, just make improvements all over the park. Uh, it's the exciting. The backstage, backstage amenities have helped a That's lot. That's huge. And so now when I talk to bands, you know, that we had a great reputation before, but also they knew that it was maybe a little bit rustic back there. They're working out their, their uh, buses. Now we have an awesome uh, artist building. It works not only for us, but for the great folks at the play. And uh, it's busy all summer. Uh, the bowl is in beautiful shape. It's going to be a great, great season. And uh, you know what? That's one of I love my job, and I love the things that we get to do with Lincoln. But Pinewood Bowl has been one of the real joys. And to see um, all these great different acts, mm -hmm. and and they fit perfectly. Last year, you know, we finished off with. Uh, this year, we finished off with uh, my bucket list, Steely Dan. <laughs> and it was every you know, it was every piece of impressive as as, as I hoped it would be. And we're going to have some of those type of bands this next year. So let's, I look forward to it. Getting better and better. Yep. Be some great announcements in the next couple of weeks. So 
keep uh, either listening to radio and or uh, check our website often, and we'll have some really great bands to uh, uh, bring to Lincoln. All right. Again, the websites, websites, PinnacleBankArena.com and PinewoodBowlTheater.com. There's only the one concert there listed for now, but there's some great photos there up is. on the Pinewood Bowl website. Yeah, go back so and take a look and then kind of, you know, run through the, the list of all the people we've had over the last seven years, and it's amazing when you look at that list. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, we Diane. Thank you. We will see you next month. And that is all for this month's Out and About show. I want to thank all the guests that we had today. If you missed any of the events, stay tuned. We'll run a list right after the show. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you out and about.